It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And we are in University City at the fabled Coral Reef in, uh, installation. It's been a couple years, guys, and it's time um, for maintenance. It's time to make some edits and obviously want to take you along. So for one thing, I remember, you know, it's been two years, so lots needs to not needs to happen simple things like leveling this pot it's a little crooked simple things like that to tightening up the tapestry that's just a little tired and run amucky i sent greg off to southwest boulder and stone to grab rock we have cali gold three eighths burgundy three quarter creva and uh fire glass in this garden so not not too many types of rock um, which is nice so a couple couple things to point out our our client uh, prefers the small agaves as singles so we will be depupping the kishokan and the cream spike that is subjective there's no right or wrong way to grow these plants. And if you prefer them as singles, you can absolutely depup. Once the babies get to be about the size of a silver dollar, um, you're good. You're good to go. So we lost a beautiful, beautiful crested plant um, that was located up here next to the Fuquaria. Um, we are also uh, pulled out the beautiful Mangabe mission to Mars, and we're going to pot that and put it in a new spot because it was just getting to be too big. I have lots of help today too. I've got Gordon, I've got Cully, I've got Kevin and Mel, and Haley is around here somewhere too. Uh, so lots and lots of help. We are going to also be removing this hot mess of Kalanchoe right here and planting something better. Uh, the coin plant is a little yellow, so it'll get a little uh, fertilizer. And the beautiful aloe Plicatilis is going to be rehomed in a different pot and staged in the landscape. Here's some plants that Michael has collected for use in the landscape. He is a phenomenal collector. He shops at the boutiques, like uh, Jeff Moore's Salon of Succulents, for example. Armstrong, this is where he got this gorgeous creature. So I have lots of fun things to put in the landscape, you know, as I start to take things out. Um, here's the Mission to Mars. Look at that, it's ginormous. Got it out all perfectly intact. And we'll deal also with these blooming aeoniums in here as well. So yeah, let me take you over to the cause inside. Your shoes untied, Gordon. Okay. Is it uncurled? And that, this little dwarf resinifera just, it corked. <laughs> Jade when that happens. Um, they did some dying back in the middle. It's just not that cute. So we're going to mess around and see if we might be able to pull out uh, some of the, the corked pieces and then push it all together and shove it up here. Uh, pulled a barrel cactus out from right here that was really lost. So I'm thinking about putting that girl back in there. Also, you will note that this Euphorbia trigona looks awful so that needs to come out to you guys that euphorbia trigona remember oh, yeah. and also uh ask michael when you see him next i i don't know if he wants to keep the sticks on fire what what's happening with that i vote no but um we'll see what he says about the sticks on fire uh, okay um yeah and then we, we had a gigantic plant, Euphorbia, right here that was just way too big. And Gordon and Haley expertly got that out of the ground 
Oh, that really looks nice in that it um, opened up that shelf. You couldn't even see it before. So we'll fix, we'll fix the retention there. We just lost a few little pieces of rubble, no big deal. And then, you know, we'll have a new plant uh, to place in that spot. This euphorbia, or not euphorbia, agave quadricolor. Ugh. Um, I don't use this plant anymore. It's really pretty, but she pops so um, prolifically. Look, way up in here, we have babies. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna dig her out. You wanna do that, Gordon? That's the next job. Yeah, we're gonna dig out that, um, that agave. Uh, you want to go ahead and get started? This is kind of interesting. We'll let we'll let the friends and followers see how this see how this works. This plant is as tough as nails. So guys, if you have agave quadricolor, don't stress. Uh, you aren't going to hurt her. These pups are all growing off of white runners, and these runners can extend for miles. Okay, that might be a slight exaggeration, but they can go far. So the way to handle her, if you really love her and you want to keep her in the garden, see, look at that. See those white runners and roots and just stuff, okay? You can take everything out, including the mom, trim off all of the roots and runners, and then just reset as cutting. Do that before it gets too hot or too cold, depending on your hemisphere, and this plant won't even blink. All right, ugh. Uh, this, um, Echeveria harmsii right here. I don't know. I think it needs to come out. We need to put something else there. It just looks ratty and run amucky. Uh, isn't this Millii spectacular? I have to literally stand back. It's so big. And all of Michael Sansevieria back here with his seahorse fountain are just stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Um, our undulata is doing its thing, doing what we pay her to do, just undulating like crazy. We got a lot of weed in here too. These uh, sedum took a hit. They're all pilled from the hail. I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of hail damage on your plants too. See, look at that. The mangaves really took a hit. They don't love the cold and they certainly don't love the hail. So we just kind of have to live with that. Um, but this area, this garden, it's beautiful, look. You know, it's visually breathtaking, but details, details. There's a lot of leaf drop from this Pyrus calicami. Ugh. Um, so I need to get in there and clean up all the leaves, tighten up the burgundy ribbons. Uh, as I said, Greg went to get more rock so I can add more rock. You can see kind of where we need. I see dirt. We need more rock. We're going to make, you know, some edits like this, uh, Cal and Coe. Many of these in the garden need cut and reset. That's ugly. That cotyledon and long fingers. Hate it. This, ew, that's just gross. The little um, Echeveria is doing okay. That's a little Sahara, but that is tragic. So that will all come out, do something else there. This looks good. More Kalanchoe that need beheaded. I don't like seeing that trunk. So that'll get cut and reset. These will get cut and reset. The color, the red is spectacular. Uh, that, that bunch looks really nice back there. It gets a little more shade and protection and radiant heat from the wall. So it's, it's been happier. The jades, Argentia sunsets are spectacular. This little Euphorbia Susanna is lost. She's coming out and going to be placed in a shady spot over there. She likes, she likes the shade. And this does get kind of hot right here in the summer. Your mangaves are probably blooming. Just cut the blooms off. These are not pretty. <laughs> the blooms are kind of nothing burgers. Uh, so you can cut them at any time. You'll also probably notice a lot of aphids on your blooms. It's spring and they love, um, they love to invest, infest the new growth. So you can treat this with alcohol or with a chemical pesticide, depending on your personal preference and or just cut the stalks off, which is what I'm going to do. 
this this portalcaria minima is really doing what I want it to do, just laying flat and spreading. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. We have a fallen milii up here that's dead, gosh darn it, because look at how good the rest of them look. I didn't plant these, they were here, I just thinned them. I may have added a couple, I don't remember, but this was basically done, you know, um, I added some things. I think I added the minimas and um, I think the little Senecios, Maldri, De, Maldri, I've committed, Maldriens, um, were here and I love the blue against that coral. But yeah, this is just needs edited. It's kind of run amucky. Let's do some snipping and clipping there. The Synodenium grantii, um, it's just naked because it's been cold and it went dormant, but it'll bounce back. It's happy here, actually. More fantastic minima action here. I will open these up and lace them out a little bit. Keep them off of the sidewalk. And this Stagudii Fuquaria is stunning. Way happier than the one over on the other side in the coral reef. Oh, goodness. And then Milii, Cotyledon. Here's a dead Kalanchoe that we will just remove. We also removed a Kalanchoe uh, from here that just was not happy. And I think I had suggested a plant. Oh, wait. Crap. Where'd it go? Huh. I'm pretty sure there was a another Mangabe right there. I don't know where it went. Yeah, I can see the leaves. Where did they take it? Well, we'll get it back because I wanted to plant the mangave right there. And then I'll figure something else out right there. But yeah, so there you have it. Uh, be sure and stay tuned um, through to the completion of this video to see the phenomenal after. I love doing these seasonal maintenances because the plants are already so mature and so beautiful and being able to come in and just fluff and buff and put a spit shine on everything is just so rewarding um, and this of course is a extremely epic garden that deserves all of our tlc look at all my busy bees look at them go All right, so we have made some changes. We got the Mangave mission to Mars. Basically the same, t <laughs> we ended up putting it back where it originally was pretty much. It was really crowded in there with some other plant material. So we moved the Fuquaria to the back corner over there. You can see that we added a pot with a pretty swordfish aloe and I moved the Cameronii over here. It was over by the Mission to Mars, but it was too competitive. And then we've got, you know, just these wonderful crested, beautiful crested euphorbias, Michael's collection. Popped one in there. Popped one in over here. I'm going to do some rock work. I'm going to bring in some burgundy over here to anchor that little crest because it's kind of lost right now against the Cali Gold, but I will fix that. Also gonna fertilize the coin plant, just a little yellow, but we'll get it fixed. Oh, and the Plicatillus that was in this beautiful pot was rotting. When Cully went to take it out of the pot, he noticed the trunks were squishy. So we saved it and we, we have put the cuttings in the ground. I'll show you where we put them. The cuttings were safe, they were, turgid there was no sign of rot um, if you live in an area where you're going to be seeing a lot of rainfall you are going to want to harden your plants off before you put them in the ground as cuttings we should be pretty much through the rain now i don't anticipate much if any more this year so i feel safe in putting things in the ground without hardening them off then he's got picked up these beautiful uh, agavoides ebony's so we popped them in to companion with these lipstick here. And, you know, I'll be tightening up that rock work. 
What else? What else? What else? We depupped the cream spike and the Kisho Khan per our client's request. Uh, Greg, is that a problem? I was planting that Echeveria and I saw that cut line. Yeah, maybe a problem. Okay, so um, we popped that hidden barrel cactus in down here. It's so cute. Then I tightened up the tapestry, did some, you know, beheaded, cut off some spent blooms, tucked in a few fresh things. Our totem pole cactus, staged those right there. They look spectacular. And then here, here's the Plicatillus, restaged. And I'm confident that they are going to do just fine in their new home. Okay, moving back around here, we have some more changes. We took, um, I don't even remember what now, took something out over here uh, and we popped in this pot with this fantastic crest, Mertillo crest. I'll top dress that with some copper fire glass. Um, oh yeah, the finger, the Euphorbia finger plant, that giant plant came out of here. It was completely covering up our beach. So we put something that will stay a little lower profile. Auntie's pot's fabulous. I'm not sure where he got these, but they are gorgeous. And now he has three in the garden. Uh, you can see the one here. Then there's the big one in the middle. And then the one with, oh, Greg, Greg, don't fall. Uh, the, <laughs> the one with the new little swordfish aloe in it. Uh, we dug up the quadricolors and reset them as cuttings. They look very, very pretty. And the guys are busy over here. Look at that. Look at those worker bees. Um, we're just picking all the leaves up, the detritus, um, deadheading. We're cutting a lot of the Calanchoe Luciers and resetting them. Look at that detritus, amazing. Okay, see, let's see. What you doing over here, Kevy? Uh, ah. Giving it a haircut. Ah. Trimming that portalacaria minima. And we're not gonna do anything with that upper level. I love it. I think, you know, again, we're dialing in the, the lower part here and exposing more of the top level. This is not gonna be as wild. Very pretty. Yeah, we pulled out some cotyledon long fingers that just didn't look good. Cut the minimas to expose the rocks. Look at that jasper purple rock. Isn't that stunning? We're out of that again. No more jasper purple for the foreseeable future. And then we've got Gordon here resetting some of these sedum Vera Higgins that got a little bit leggy. And look at the caudal, or look at the Kalanchoe. Doesn't that look so nice? Cut and reset. So great. Um, over here, weeding, picking up leaves. Uh, we planted a jaguar here, mangave, and I just need to find something to put right here, which won't be hard. So the guys are just pulling weeds, you know, little weeds as they go my seaweed pull a weed but this is such an absolute pleasure to work in a garden this beautiful let me show you what we did with that euphorbia that we took out yeah and don't forget to get the little weeds here at the edge yikes there's a lot of them okay all right This is the fire glass. We get this at Southwest um, and KRC in the bucket. That's going to go in this pot. Look at this little, little crenunculation on this Echeveria. What a hoot. It's like a little wart. Isn't that cute? Okay, moving on.
So it was broken, right? Oh gosh, don't kill yourself. Daddy's fixing irrigation and running to the rock yard. Ah, okay. All right. So this aeonium bed, we've got some mamas see that are blooming out. He's got some clibia or kaffir, it's kaffir lily. It's not really a very politically correct term to use anymore. I mean, no disrespect when I said that, that's how I was raised to call that plant, but it is a clibia. Um, they're, they're beautiful plants and they're gonna be mixed in here with the aeoniums. That was our client's idea and it's a darn good one. This is where the Euphorbia's new home is. Check it out. Stunning, right? Absolutely beautiful. Perfect. He had a little Dazzlerian longissimum in here and it was just dwarfed. That is perfect. He's going to get a couple more boulders to plant in front and then this will be finished. It is a wrap at the coral reef. I couldn't even sleep last night. I was so excited about this. And the guys just knocked it out of the park. And with the collaboration of our clients, uh, I, I'm having a hard time leaving. <laughs> just wanna stay here. It is so unbelievable. I, I don't even have words. So, you know, it's been a couple of years and everything has grown and what didn't work we got rid of things that got big like the mangave mission to mars we put center stage um deadheaded but you know for the most part very few new elements most of this stuff has done beautifully and has grown just as we hoped it would also i thought i guess because i did seventy-nine thousand different types of rock in my little garden I thought I had more variety, but all I had in here was Cali Gold and uh, Little Creva and some Burgundy Lava. I fluffed up the Fireglass Cave and tightened up the tapestries a little bit. But they do a great job of weeding and, you know, general maintenance. So, yeah, it's just insane 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 look at this this is sedum jacobensii i love this plant and it looks so wild and wonderful in here against this mangave and then look at there Pulling that giant euphorbia out of here and popping in this new little pot with its little crest. Top dressed it with some fire glass. It's really opened up the beach. Oh my gosh, I wish you guys could be here. I mean, the videos are great, but there is just nothing like, like being here. I'm trying to get down low here so you can get a sense of the elevations. Look at that. The side garden went in about six or seven months, I think, after the coral reef. And this just took, you know, we did take out some of the cotyledon long fingers, but we reset some of the um, yeah, like we reset these red eyes, cut them, reset them. But other than that, you know, this just took a little bit of fluffing and buffing. It's really held up beautifully. Here's some more of that incredible Jacobensii. What a great spiller.
take it. Oh my gosh, this is the first time I've noticed this utility box. You know what I'm always telling you? Don't try to hide them. The eye goes to the beautiful things before it sees the ugly. And I honestly didn't even see that there all day today until just now. Oh, the texture, the drama. This is gobsmacking. Wow. Just threw down a little more Cali gold, a little more burgundy, tightened up all the ribbons. That Susanna that was hidden moved it here to the shade. It looks great there. Some of these Sansevieria are really stunning too and a little bit on the rare side. Our client made these pots, all of these. These containers were made by him. This one took a little bit of heat, or I should say cold. Wow, 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 wow. And this little aloe, and I don't know what it is. Nobody seemed to know, but it's perfect there. Just that, that little aloe looks so good. So we have just enough places for the eye to rest, just enough. I don't want to use the word restraint because that's not really accurate. Um, there's no restraint, but in the best possible way, there's no restraint. Yeah, just what an incredibly stunning, stunning garden. So be sure and tune in tomorrow. Our client did an installation called Camille's Garden along the side of his property. And I'm going to do a special video and showcase that garden. Um, so be sure and tune in tomorrow to see that. I added a little burgundy lava right here. Because this crest was a little lost against the Cali Gold. So I just brought in a little swath of burgundy three-quarter, connected it right up here, there. Yeah. That tied that to the ground, if you will. So we deadheaded the aeoniums, got rid of the bloomers. I'm gonna add some, as I said, some clivia in here, or the client is. He found some boulders in the back. They're not big enough, but they're placeholders. Okay. So great. So, you know, with the help of everybody, we got her done. And we'll be back again next year to do it again. But until then, everybody get out in your gardens, tear in, be brave, try things. Don't be afraid to fail because remember, we don't learn anything when we're getting it right. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with really the grand reveal of the maintenance two years in on the coral reef in University City. Bye guys.